So we've looked at how to do our repositories from the web GUI, but how about using a different file, like let's or a different program. Like let's use uh, Git Kraken. Uh, Git Kraken is a uh, program that you can use to work with your GitHub repositories. Um, it's really a uh, well-developed tool, quite handy. You can use it for free. And then they do have a professional version which has more uh, tools in it. You can uh, click on the video there if you wanna see all the great things it can do. But we're gonna go ahead and use it to see how we can upload, download, change, and edit files uh, straight from our computer, which is pretty handy. Uh, you can, of course, get your own account. Uh, sorry, my internet's a little slow. So I have to wait for this download to finish. Um, so the web GUI is really nice. Unfortunately, it's a little bit tedious when you're trying to commit a lot of changes. You probably aren't going to be doing your work on the website GUI. You're going to be doing your work on your computer, and then you just want to upload that new work that you've done to the website, to the repository. And so Git Kraken is just one of many tools that you can use for this purpose. We're going to look at command line tools as well. Uh, typically, I use the command line tools. Uh, but Git Kraken is really a well-designed tool, very handy to use, especially if you have a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on. So of course, do we want to keep this file? Yes, we do. And so there we have our Debian package. I'm going to go ahead and install that. Um, if you're on Windows, of course, it would be just like a double-click application. Um, inside the package, you can see that it's just got a bunch of stuff. You could extract it, um, but this, this is a, a file ready to be installed on Debian. So here we are, we see the, the file, and uh, I'm just going to use dpackage. Um, help if I write the right stuff. Change over to root user. Okay, I really do know my password. Hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to use dpackage and we're going to install this Git Kraken package. There we go, it's reading to our database, it's going to unpack and start installing. Um, again, if you're using Windows or Mac, it's just executable that you click on. And we can run it right here. We'll type git kraken. Um, you probably have like a menu bar and you can just click on it as well. Pretty handy. So here we go. We've opened it up and it's going to ask us to log in. We can sign in with our GitHub or our git kraken account. We can use our email address. Uh, I just like to sign in with my GitHub. It's going to go to the GitHub page and ask me for my password. I'm already logged in, so it's going to say success. So I've given it permission to do this before. But it will ask you if you want to allow this. Uh, it asks if you want to try the trial version of the pro version. I say no thanks. You can keep using it for free forever. Um, it's just that the pro version has some extra, extra tools in it. So let's open up a repository so we can make a new repository. We can clone one that we already have. So where do we want to put it? Let's, where do we want to get it? So let's get it from GitHub. I'm signed in as the Alaska Linux user. So uh, we can grab one of the repositories we have. What is that test repository we did? There we go, test repo. We'll take that. We'll put it, where do we want to put it? We need a place to put it at. We'll just put it uh, in my home folder there, and we'll clone it. Um, you can also use from GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, lots of lots of great uses here. Anything that uses Git. 
So let's go ahead and clone this uh, clone this repo. Do we want to open it? Yes, we do. Here we go. Now notice this shows all the work that we've already done that we saw in the web GUI or the web interface. So we see our branches, we see our commits, we see the branches side by side and their commits together. We see where they merge back to, into one. Um, who made those commits? We see what's on the computer and what's on the origin. The origin would be the website or the web GUI or wherever we're hosting the repository. If your repository is local, then the origin will be local. So take a look here. So we see our test repo. Here's all our files from the master branch there. You see our log cat, see how it's been edited with that top line missing just like we did on the web GUI, all those files are there. Um, we can switch back and forth to which branch. Notice that we, we jump to the patch branch, which goes back before uh, the merge and before another file. Notice another file is missing here. And you're like, whoa, where did it go? And notice that our beginning of main is back there again. So uh, it'll actually change which files are available in the, in the folder. And it's done, if you look at hidden files, you'll see this get folder, and that's where it's holding all the information and it's changing what you um, are display or what you will see as the current working directory based on what's in those get folders and what you've chosen to be the uh, branch that you've checked out. And here we go. We've got another file back. We've got our log file that's been changed once again. So this is a lot handier because then you can start working on a file uh, locally and then update that to the website because that's typically how you're going to be working. So let's say uh, we don't need all this stuff. We'll just delete that. And then let's scroll down here and find something else. Uh, here's some more stuff. We don't need this information. We'll go ahead and delete that. Okay. We'll write uh, uh, this. This is my edited file that I used Git Kraken for. Okay, so now we save this file, and let's take a look at Git Kraken. Notice that the top here it has this work in progress file, and it shows us this one modified file. And this is work in progress here. So this logcut.txt is orange because it's been changed. So here we have, we see all the deletions and the addition, and then the other deletions that we did, as well as the deletion or the insertion that we did right there. So this file is not saved. It's not ready to be pushed yet or to be merged or, excuse me, to be committed yet. So to get it ready to commit, we can stage all the changes or just particular files. So we'll go ahead and stage them. So now we're ready to commit them. So we've added them, and now we're ready to commit them to make that a permanent change. So we give it a short and long description, just like we did on the web GUI interface. And I just edit this to test the cracking. And so now we have our stage file and we can commit that change to the file. So it's actually gonna make this a permanent commit. Poof, and there we go. And you can see it's locally stored, but it's not on the origin. Origin is still back at master. To prove that we can, well, we don't need that anymore. So we can go to our web GUI. Don't need that. Okay. So here, we, if we refresh this page, we see that the changes that we made have not shown up here yet because we've only made those changes on our local computer. But if we want those changes to be moved from the local computer to the origin, to the place where the repository is stored, we can use this push button. So we're gonna push that to our repository. And there we go. It's been pushed successfully master to origin. Um, 
and it gets pushed to whichever branch we have checked out. And here we go. Now we refresh and we see, oh, we edited the log cat. Let's see that change. Yep, here we go. All the edits that we just made. So Git Kraken really super handy. Um, we're going to look at a few more things that we can do, but you can see that all the changes that we made locally, we now just added to the website. Super handy. So here we are, we're back at Git Kraken. Um, we can do a lot of things. We can undo that commit. We can redo the commit. Uh, we can pull, which is grab things. We can make new branches. Uh, we see here that the last thing we did, what we have clicked on, we're editing the log cat. We'll click on something else. We here create another file. We can actually create a new branch from there, cherry pick it. Uh, we can reset the master to this commit. And, we can actually go back to that. We can revert the commit or get rid of it. Uh, do you really, do you want to immediately commit the reverted changes? Yes. Now notice this again, it's local. So I've got rid of that another file change. I'm gonna push that and now it's gonna show up on the repository which is stored on GitHub. So here we go. Uh, if we refresh the page, that file, another file, is gone because we reverted that commit. We got rid of that commit. We didn't want it anymore. We undid those changes. So uh, notice that it still says how we created another file, even though now we got rid of that another file. The commit history is still there. So we can see what it is we did. We can click on the log cat. We can click on anything. We can read something. Um, and, you know, here's our file back. Still has the changes that we made after that point. See, here's that git kraken line we added after we've made it another file. Reverting only changed the portion that had to do with that specific commit. It doesn't change everything which happened after it. So we might be like, oh, okay. We can uh, we can reset the commit. We can do a lot of things here. Let's uh, let's reset back to this previous commit. Let's hard. We'll discard the changes or soft. We'll keep all the changes. Um, it's really up to you. We'll do we'll do uh, soft here. So what we want to do is we want to revert, not revert a change, but we want to reset the master back to a different point in time. We're going to be like, whoops, we didn't want to revert that file. We didn't want to get rid of it. Uh-oh. Uh we'll commit that change. Once again, it was only local. Now we got to push it. It's asking us, do we want to pull first or do we want to force push? In this case, we want to force push. Um, kind of a deeper discussion there for another time. There we go. So now... <clears throat> what we've done <clears throat> is we've changed by resetting back to an earlier point in time. And by doing so, notice that commit is gone. The revert commit is completely gone. It's not even shown anymore because we got rid of it. So, and you can see that it's not in here anymore either. So let's make a new branch. We can click on something. We can say, let's just make this into a new branch. Poof, there you go. Test two. We can push that, submit. And now, then push to origin. You can see that we actually have three branches. The test two, master, and of course, the patch branch. So you can see as it gets a little more complicated as you start changing, doing several branches, doing additions, deletions, reverting, resetting. Um, so here you can see, if you look at that fork button, you can see all the, all the different changes, which mirror what we have on our local machine here. Let's 
see. Let's choose a different branch. Well, let's see. So let's let's uh, create uh, some more files here. Let's we've we've added a new folder. We're going to create a new empty file. Um, we'll call it junk. Let's uh, edit that file. And this is junk file. So now we have a work in progress that's for the test two branch. Remember, we checked out the test two branch we see over on the side test two. We're going to save that. We're going to commit it. I just made a new file. And it is junk file. So I'm going to commit that. So there we go. So now, of course, it's only stored locally, not stored in the origin. So we have to push to push it up to the web to put that onto our repository on GitHub. Here you go. And you can see the commit. You can take a look at it. There's our new folder with our new file in it, just like what we have here. So we can <clears throat> we can delete that branch. We can uh, make some tags. We can uh, pull do a pull request here, just like we did on the website. We're gonna do a pull request to the master and say, "Yep, I want that pull request. I want to I want to update this information into the master branch. This is good code. We want to keep using that." So it's been done. The pull request is done. And so then we can see our pull request right here. It's got our button. We can view it on GitHub. We can check it out. Um, and go ahead and take a look. Refresh our page here. There's our pull request. OK, so we can take our pull request now. We look at it and say, OK, they wanted to merge this. Yep, there's no conflict. Yep, we'll go ahead and merge it, add that file to, um, to the master. And now, in our fork, we see this pattern here, which we've now made a change online, but we haven't made a change locally. So, wait a second, see if it catches up here. There it goes. So, <clears throat> so now it sees that in the origin, I have something newer than what I have locally. So if I want that local item, I got to check out that branch. Oh, there we go, under local. So I checked out that branch and then I got a pull. So I'm going to pull that information from the repository to the local machine. So push, I'm sending it, pull, I'm getting it to the local machine. So push goes to the web, pull comes from the web. So okay, there was a change that was done on the website, showed up in here, I want to pull that. Now I've added that to my local, local machine. 